Hey guys, and welcome back to another Java tutorial video. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about sets and lists. Now sets and lists are from something known as the collection interface from Java. I believe that's what it's called. Someone correct me if that's wrong, but I think that's the name. And they are fairly complicated. Now I'm just going to talk about really like the basics of them. There's a lot more to do with sets and lists. Um, I know I'm probably going to get some comment from some guy who says, wow, you really, you didn't talk about a lot of this, you didn't, but I can't explain all of it to you guys right now because it's very difficult to understand if you don't know a lot about data structures, which in our case, we don't. So I'm just going to talk about what a list is, what a set is quickly, and a very basic standard implementation of them. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because whenever you're programming stuff, like a lot of Java tutorials you watch probably won't talk about these um, because they're really complicated, but you're going to need them to do certain things. So for example, with an array, uh, what I talked about before, how you could like, you had to set the size of the array, like you had to know how many elements you wanted. You don't need to do that with a set or with a uh, list. And that's the main advantage of it because a lot of times we're going to be adding things into per se a list or a set and we don't know how many things we're going to be adding so we can't define like an array of that length if that makes sense to us. So let's actually just get started. We're going to talk about sets first and then we'll move into lists. So I'm just going to create a set and I'm just going to type it out and then kind of explain exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to call this set T equal to uh, new, that's what we need, new hash set and integer okay so this already probably looks confusing and if you're typing this out with me you're getting these red lines now what we should do uh to get rid of these red lines is we just have to hover over them and click import set uh by like clicking on whatever it says there if you don't have if you're not using this ide just literally type import java.util.set and for hash set same thing we're just going to click on it and import it uh just because this isn't like built into main uh the Java functionality. All right. So we have a set. Now, what is a set? How do we create it? Um, well, a set is a collection of unordered elements that are unique, meaning that a set cannot contain the same element twice and it doesn't know where that element exists. So you can kind of think of a set as just like a big bubble and you kind of just throw things into it and it doesn't really know where they are. It just knows that they exist there. Now, you also have to understand that can only be unique things. So for example, uh, I've created this integer set and this is the way that you do it. So you type the keyword set uh, in these little uh, like greater than sign, less than sign, whatever you want to call it, tags. If you're talking HTML, you type integer and I have the name T and I'm setting that equal to new hash set. Now you don't have to understand what a hash set is. Just know that it's like the standard implementation of a set. And then same thing, the type, so integer, and then these brackets here. Now inside of these brackets, if you had another set you had created, like say I set, created a set uh, called like W, I could put W in here and assuming it had any elements in it, this set would get all of the elements from W and start with that. And then you could add things into it and whatnot, okay? So to add things to a set, I'm just gonna do this, we'll go through and, and see how it works, all right? You simply type dot add. So I'm gonna say t dot add, in this case, I'm gonna add five. And we'll just copy this and we'll add like a few different numbers into our set. So in this case, I'll add seven and we'll add five again, and then we'll add nine, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna print this set out to show you what it looks like. Now remember I said unordered collection of unique elements, okay? So let's print this out. And you can see that we get five, seven, and nine. And notice that this add right here actually didn't do anything. And that's because since we already have a five in our set, when we try to add another five to it, since it already exists, uh, it doesn't care and it just doesn't add it. All right, now I'm gonna add another element. In this case, let's add like negative, negative zero, negative eight, all right, as our element. Uh, and you can see that we don't have any specific order now see when i printed this like i had added five seven nine and negative eight so you think that should be the order that we get it or it should come in some sorted order or something like that uh that doesn't happen with a hash set okay a standard hash set and that's just because again we're just a bubble we just know that things exist we don't care where they exist uh, or how many times they exist we just care if they exist now, to see if something exists in a set, and this is typically something you want to do, like this is a main uh, operation, checking if something exists, that's why you use a set. 
uh, you can type t dot contains or like your set name dot contains and then any element in here that you want so in this case i can do like if five is contained in the set and it's going to be able to tell me that really fast now i can't really explain to you why sets are so fast but just know that whenever you're looking for something in a set you can do that very quickly like very fast like in constant time it doesn't matter how big the set is the set could be two million elements uh, or it could be five elements it'll take you the same amount of time to look if something exists in the set okay and same thing with adding and removing things from the set that happens almost instantly as opposed to with arrays the larger the array gets the longer it's going to take us to look through and find certain elements okay just uh, we have to understand that so what i'm going to do is create a variable i'm just going to call it boolean uh, x is equal to uh, this and what i'm going to do is i'm simply just going to print x now to see if uh, that is contained and in this case yes it is uh, five is contained again if i do something like zero then obviously we get false that's not in there to remove something we can type t dot remove uh, or set name dot remove and then whatever the element is that we want to remove so in this case if i want to remove like nine from my set i would do that and then if i print my set so in this case t uh, we just get five seven negative eight because we removed nine those are kind of like the standard operations uh two i'm trying to think if there's any other ones Okay, so there's one more, or there's a few more, but I don't know which ones are important. You can clear an entire set by just doing dot clear. So I'll just simply remove everything from it uh, like that. To see if a set is empty, you can do dot is empty, and this will literally just tell you if it's empty or not. Uh, to get the length of the set, you can do t uh, dot size, and this will tell you how many elements. So in this case, if I do size, change this to an int, and just print x here then we get a size of three so like again if we had nothing in there the size would be zero so is empty and that are kind of like similar in the sense uh, that you can just check by the size um and yeah so that's a hash set a hash set is like the standard set um and that's the way that it works the way i explained it to you now they also have a tree set and we also have a linked hash set now whenever you use these things they're going to pop up here uh, I'm not really going to talk about what these do too much. I'm just going to kind of show you um, the way a tree set works. Now, a tree set is similar to a set in the sense that you can only have the, or a hash set, sorry, that you can only have unique elements. Uh, but these are actually ordered, and they're ordered in a tree data structure. Um, you don't have to understand what this means. Just know that it's like it shows up ordered. What's, what's our problem here? just want to read this. Error. Tree set cannot be resolved to a type. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, tree set. Well, let's just try this um that still worked okay so anyways <laughs> i don't know why i was showing me an error but tree set is going to actually give us an order so if i type t like this you can see that we actually have an order for the set now so negative eight five and seven now like arrays like we can't just index the set and we can't just say like t zero like that doesn't work doing that like we were able to do with arrays but when we print it out or when we look through the set it maintains this order uh, in like a tree functionality that I can't really explain to you. Now linked hash sets uh, are this. So linked hash set, again, we're gonna have to uh, import this up there, it's linked hash set. And this is similar to a basic set, it's just faster on certain operations. So I'm not, like I don't really wanna talk about them too much cause I feel like I'm already confusing you guys, but just understand if maybe you know a bit about like operations and speed and time complexity, uh, they have a linked hash set, a regular hash set and a tree hash set or tree set or whatever I typed, okay? All right, so that's enough for sets. Um, don't worry if this is a bit confusing, like we're, we're not gonna be using these too much. I just wanna show you cause I feel like you guys are gonna need to do this for some of your projects or whatnot if you're learning this for a reason. Now we also have lists. Now lists, these are easier to understand, don't worry. Uh, but there is again two types. So to create a list, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna type array list. We're gonna give it a type. In this case, I'm just gonna give my integer type. Um, and notice how I'm not typing int, I'm typing integer. Just that's important that we need to use integer here instead of int, okay? So array list integer, I'm gonna call this one t again equals new array list. And we'll type integer and we'll put brackets and there we go now we're gonna have to import this so import array list up there 
and we now have an, a list. And what a list allows us to do is it's, you can almost think of it as the exact same thing as an array, except it's a bit slower and it can change sizes. So we can add things to it, we can remove things from it. And if we get to like the end of the uh, array or the end of the list, sorry, we can just add another element into it. it, it doesn't matter. So we can have like a dynamically sized array. These have pretty much identical properties to the set. So to add things, you can do t.add and you can add like in any element you want. So you add like one, right? Okay, that works fine. To remove things, t.remove. Uh, now to index things, because just like an array, we can actually index things with a list because this is gonna care about the position. It's not going to uh, just care that it exists like a set. What we can do is we can do t.get and then we can give an index, right? So it's even, it's showing, it's literally saying index right here. So I do dot index zero, then that would give me one, right? Because one is added in there. Now to uh, like put thing, put something or to set something at a certain index, what you do this is t dot set and you type the index and the element. So I wanted to set index one per se to be equal to like five, then that's the way I would do it. Index one is five, okay? We print out uh, t here just to show you what it looks like. Uh, one sec. Okay, sorry, but that's we can't do that. We have to do t. We have to add something in. So to set something like this, sorry, uh, you have to actually have something added at that index. I forgot I didn't add that. So I'm just gonna add two. So what I'm doing now essentially is what this set actually does is you have to have something already existing at that index. And this is, is gonna change that index for you. So this is to change an already existing index. And before I was trying to set one when we didn't have that in, so that was my mistake. But anyways, there we go. So now that works. Uh, we've changed two to equal to five and two's at position one, right? So that's the way that that works. Well, I've just got a thing up here. I'm just gonna read through a few of these. Uh, set, uh, yeah, okay, so that's the basic ones. Again, we have dot size, so t dot size we can do t.empty or is empty. And this is actually a really useful one. It's called sublist. And what this allows us to do is get from certain indexes. So t.sublist, let's see, add argument. Yeah, so we just need int. So this is gonna allow us to get within a certain range. So say I add like these a bunch of times. Uh, okay, so we have six elements now. Uh, what, what I want to do is I want to get from like index one to index three and I want to print that to the screen. So let's just take this and put this here instead. So let's get rid of T, get rid of this semicolon and print out and see what we get. So what we get here now is five and one because although our uh, list actually has, what do you call it? It's like six elements in it from here. We can just get the elements from one to three not including three. So if I type like one to four, then you should see we get one more element in here. We get five, one and two, because that's from, from index one to index four, but not including index four. That's what we're grabbing. And we're getting all those elements in the, uh, the sub list like that. Now this is array list. We also have linked list. Again, this is another data structure that I can't really explain to you just understand that it is faster um, at certain operations than an array list. So for any of you that understand the difference between this, you have linked list and array list. Uh, and you guys, I recommend you to play with those and figure them out on yourself. Anyways, we're coming up on about 15 minutes now almost. Uh, and that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with sets and lists. Now I know this video might've been a bit confusing. Um, There's a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to explain to you guys, but just understand that if you're trying to do something and you don't know how long you want something to be like a list uh, or an array, you don't know how long you want it to be. It's a, a different amount of elements. Like you don't know, you would just use an array list the way that I showed that to you before. So array list like that, because then you can add things, you can get things, you can set things uh, and you don't have to worry about like having a designated length. The reason you use a set is when you don't care how many times something exists or where it exists, you just care if it exists. And the reason a set is better is because it's simpler and it's a lot faster to do operations on in terms of like a computer efficiency standpoint. Uh, that's when you would use a set. 
Anyways, I'm sorry about the confusing video. In the next one, I am going to be talking about hash tables, which again are similar to this. But then after that, we're going to be moving into object oriented programming, getting into classes. And that stuff's not as hard. It is just a bit more information to remember. Anyways, that's been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not. And I will see you again in another one.